Okay, and this is the second side of our planning. Uh, planning a problem-centered story. It's this sheet here. And again, I sort of drew it on the board just to make it a little bigger so we could talk about it, fill it in. So we have eight numbered, eight numbered circles. And my class yesterday, on Thursday, we only did the first three. Uh, I'm hoping on Friday, when this is uploaded, we'll probably finish it off. I don't know. I'm hoping we get through that and start kind of getting our opening sentence ready, okay? So, what are these circles for? If you remember the story, the way a story works, the plot works, in one of those diagrams I gave you guys, we have that story mountain we talked about. Something like that, right? And in that diagram, I should draw right here in the middle, just so I'm pretty sure it should be lined up. Let me just check, see if I can see that. Oh, I can see it. Okay, we're good. Okay, so we have the exposition. That's the beginning of the story. That sets the characters and the setting, right? We, we find out who the characters are, where they are, and why should we care about these characters. So I'll just write down expo for exposition, okay? That's these two circles. This is your exposition. This is the beginning of the story. So you're just introducing character and setting. I'll get into that in a second with an example. But then this third one is right here. It's the inciting incident. It's the introduction to the problem. This is where we're going to have our first conflict in the story. That's going to be this bubble here. Then we're going to get into our rising action. And that's going to take us through this one, this one, and this one. Then we're going to get to our climax. That's the most exciting part of the story. That's going to be number seven. Then we're going to get down to falling action. and resolution and that's going to be number eight so because we're just going to do a very simple story for a first time it's really condensed we just have all of that into number eight for the end there and we're just going to have some incidents happening for a rising action it's not going to be a long complicated story for the first one okay so how do we do this well let's think about little red riding hood what things happen that get us to the point where she can meet the wolf, right? Some things have to happen before we get to that conflict, right? That initial conflict in the story. So, uh, usually in versions of the story, Little Red Riding Hood is baking a treat or mom bakes a treat, grandma's sick, something happens, right? So we have to have that sort of set up. So let's just say um, she bakes cookies, right? And I'm going to make this really simple for me because we're not going to spend too long on, on this part of it. We're going to spend more time writing. We've just got to get an idea in our head of what to write. So, so like she bakes, and should, you should not use the character's name, but I'll say she bakes cookies. Okay, in my version of the story, Little Red is baking the cookies. Then, part two, well, we've got to get her from her location at home going into the forest, right? So something like she packs a basket and goes to the forest. And again, if you have to go over the side, that's fine. Okay, so we have these incidents. Now, my students in the class today really struggled with not all of them, but some of them really struggled. They wanted to introduce the action early on. They wanted to be like, uh, by even number one, oh, the wolf comes and starts fighting Little Red Riding Hood. No, like you gotta have that exposition. We gotta introduce the characters, introduce the setting, let the reader know what's going on, right? So that's just what's happening in those first two spots. Third spot, now we have the conflict. Now think for a second, where do you think the conflict in the story of Little Red Riding Hood is introduced? And people have different opinions, you know, think about it. Where do you think 
Hmm. Where does the action start to pick up? Where is like even just the idea of danger introduced into the story? I would say, I would say it's when she meets the wolf in the forest. And it's not really action, it's not really conflict yet, but that's, right? So you could say, for some people might say, well, that's meeting the wolf is here, right? And the conflict begins at grandma's cottage. I'm gonna say that in my story, I'm gonna kind of change it a bit to fit this profile. So I'm gonna say that Little Red meets the wolf in the forest and in my version, she to make sure it fits this this style, she knows there's a problem already. It's not like she's innocent. Some versions she doesn't know. In my version, she knows there's a problem. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. To why we need this thought bubble. Okay, so for my version, it's when she meets the wolf in the forest. Okay, and again. You could say in other versions, that's not where the conflict begins, right? In other versions, you could say it begins at the cottage, right? But in my version, she, she meets the wolf in the forest. And in my version, in this thought bubble, it's got to introduce the character's goal. Okay, your character needs to have some sort of goal to accomplish in the story that's based on the problem. So whatever happens in here is going to be the problem. So she meets the wolf and she knows that something's wrong. And she, in my version, right? She knows something's wrong and she thinks she's got to, hmm, she's got to do something. Let's say she's got to save grandma. So she knows her grandma's in the fort, uh, must save granny. So she knows the wolf's in the forest. And in my version, she says, oh no, I know Granny's cottage is over here. The wolf's around. He's being creepy and weird. I got to get over there and save Granny. That's her objective, right? That sets up the rest of my story because now she's got something to do. We've got an antagonist that's trying to stop her, right? He doesn't want her to save Granny. He wants to get Granny himself. We've got a conflict in the story. We can now start our rising action, okay? And get to that climax. So I'm going to keep going with this. That was all we did today. I'm going to keep going with this just in case uh, we get through more and then you'll have the rest of how to use the sheet. So four, five, and six are problems that happen in the story. So you just have to think of things that can happen in your story that set your character back. If you think about favorite movies, right? Um, we were just watching some clips, and again, there's lots of clips on YouTube about this, this sort of um, way stories work, and they show you examples from Disney movies and, and other, other popular shows. So they were showing, like, Finding Nemo, and I was just thinking, yeah, okay, because they have the, you know, the initial problem where uh, ne it's Nemo, Nemo's, the, Nemo's a little fish, Nemo was taken, and his father, that's not I can't remember, his father, right, has the problem, he loses his son. But then on the way to find his son, he has problems, right, problems and problems. He meets some sharks, that doesn't go really well. He finds some sea turtles that help him navigate these um, jet stream, ocean streams, right. Um, he has to get into the dentist office. It's problem, 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 right. So in any good story, any good movie, you'll see um, there's more than one problem. Right? There's lots of little problems that lead up to our, our big problem, our climax. So, thinking about Little Red Riding Hood, she meets the wolf. Okay, problems are introduced. So when she gets to the cottage, there could be a problem. Okay, for example, she gets to the cottage, uh, wolf is disguised as grandma. Okay, that's the first problem. So Little Red has to solve that problem. So she starts to uh, interrogate the wolf, right? Oh, what? Uh, you don't look right, Grandma. You look weird. She's sort of playing with the wolf maybe a bit. I don't know. So then let's get cut through that part so I know how that's going to work in my story. Okay. So then let's say we get to the, the, that, that part where um, the wolf is going to try to trick her, right? 
The wolf is going to do something. Hmm, what could the wolf do that's going to create a new problem for her? Let's say the wolf sends a fake text from her mom telling her to go home, to get her out of the house. Okay, so she gets a fake text. This is a modern version, I guess, uh, from her mom. So she's got to solve that problem. You know, so she does a little thinking. She's like, oh no, that's fake, right? It's problem number two, doesn't bite. Hmm, what's another thing the wolf could do that would be like trying to throw her off the set? Because we don't want to get to that climax where he's, he jumps out of the bed and says, I'm going to eat you up. Yeah, that's coming, right? So we've got to have one more problem. Let's say the wolf tries to trick her. Hmm. Tries to trick her into leaving by telling her someone's outside that needs help, saying, oh, you know, maybe she says, uh, Tells, tells Little Red, Little Red, um, there's a problem in the forest. And she is going to use her skills to try, she's going to realize, oh, that's not right either. He, this is a trick. Okay, so finally we get to that scene where she's uh, saying, you know, what big eyes you have, or what big uh, teeth you have, right? That's the climax. That's where it's the life or death situation. Now, not all stories of life or death, but it's the big moment, right? Where he's like, I am the wolf, and it's all open, it's all clear. So he's going to jump out. So that's going to be the, um, she, uh, she, um, okay, the wolf tries to attack her. Okay, so you got some problems, problems, problems. Climax, the wolf tries to attack her. And then we have, we know the falling action, right? So in Little Red Riding Hood, there's lots of versions of what happens next, right? Uh, in my version, hmm, let's say Little Red Riding Hood is into mixed martial arts. And so she just, she just uses her skills and she um, knocks out the wolf. She just, bum, 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 wolf goes out. Okay, so Little Red knocks out the wolf. And of course, saves Grandma, because Grandma's, you know, I don't know, she's tied up in a closet in some versions like that version. Saves Grandma. Okay. So I kind of, I've mapped out the story. I know where my story is going to go. I know who the characters are. I know where the setting is. I know everything I need to know now to start putting it together, right? And that'll be the next step is then we start writing our story. And the hard part is to keep it relatively short because like I said, we've got, you know, a lot of steps in here. We could make it really long. I don't want to make it really long. I want to keep it under two pages. Um, so we're going to keep it kind of bare bones, and then we're going to come back to it later and add more detail. Uh, so that's what we're looking for this week. Okay. Uh, again, so far my class stopped at the third one. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll finish it. So um, if you're able to, uh, I'll let you know if we don't. But otherwise, probably we'll try to finish the story circle, just the planning. Uh, and then you can start putting your story together. We'll get into dialogue and detail, description, uh, stuff like that later. And make sure your story is original, okay? Like you can use something like this as a template, right? Because no one owns this, but don't rewrite something you've seen in a movie or a book you've read. Make sure it's your story, right? So I've made this kind of my story. I've, I've changed it enough that maybe you could say it's mine and it's, it's original enough if I add enough detail to it that it'd be okay. Right. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to try and upload this and uh, let me know if you have any questions.